Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this video, I kind of want to touch on what happens when you buy one of these fancy new lithium ion battery jump starters and you go and hook it up to your car and it doesn't jump start your car. And I'm using for an example this Ubisoft one I just tested. A couple of reasons I'm doing it. I'm not picking on them, mind you, but one, I really like this display. It really shows up good on the video and I just like the way it looks. Secondly, the first one they sent me was defective. Chances are good when you have one of these and it doesn't jump start your car, but yet it's fully charged. And I mean, not only doesn't it jump start it, but it does absolutely nothing. Chances are good. The problem is not there. The problem is this thing. And um, this thing here exists for one reason and one reason only, and that's to protect ourselves from ourselves. This is to idiot proof the thing. If you're an idiot, maybe one of these is good for you. I don't know. If you're not an idiot, chances are good this is going to cause you more problems than it's ever going to save you. So let's take a look. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is how it has 99% charge. This is a 5,000 peak amp charger. This battery is stone dead. It not only is it stone dead, but it cannot be charged. It cannot be saved. I've tried pulse chargers. I've tried a stick welder on it. I even tried reversing the polarity. It cannot be saved. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to set my meter to volts and I'm going to set the range to 99 volts. And can you see that in the, in the camera? How about that? And you know what? I should get the other voltmeter, the one with a big lit display, but I think you can see that. And we're going to check it right there. And you'll see it's got, it's got zip. And it um, doesn't matter which way I connect it up, it's got zip. So when we connect the jump starter to it, and I'm going to connect this one up now, and I'm going to put in the one that I know is good, because it was this that was no good in the, in the first Ubi they sent me. I'm going to connect up the one I know is good. That's this one. And I'm going to show you what happens when, it, when it's good. God, I hate these little rubber things. They just are nothing ever but in my way. All right, it's flashing back and forth red and yellow. That tells us it's ready to go. I'm going to put... Let me move it down to where I can get the clamps on it. I'm going to put the positive clamp on it. I'm going to put the voltmeter in there. I'm going to put that voltmeter in there. Let me see if I can get this up where you can see it good. I'm going to put this one here and now I'm going to connect the negative up. This, what happens is back here, you can't see it now, but that will start clicking or click at least once and it will turn solid green and I should get a lot more than 0.49 volts here. And there we go, 16 and a half volts. That's what is supposed to happen here. Now, let's switch to the one I, that I know is not good. And let me show you what happens. Wish I could get this easier to show all at once on the camera and work around it, but um, that just doesn't seem to be, God, I hate these plugs. They just seem like they designed them intentionally so they'll hang up on you. Okay, so I'm going to put the red clamp on. Let's get the voltmeter back up here. It'll probably show a little bit more volt because I was pumping, I was pumping um, voltage into it. Let me stick that in there. No, we're still, we're still down. Oh, we're on millivolts. Why are we on millivolts? Let's change the range back. I want the, want the decimal point there on the 99 volt scale. Now I'm going to hook this up. And again, I'd like you to be able to see that, but the, the leads aren't long enough. That'll turn, that'll click and turn green. And it did, it turned green. And look at my voltage. My voltage is, my voltage is one and a half volts. Try that again because it just wants to fight me. My thing is green and I am one and a half volts. So the bad one, it makes all the right sounds. 
it makes all the right noises and the lights and everything are right, but no power is going from there through it into the clamps. So, that's a problem. What can we do about it? Well, first, before we can do anything about it, if you bought one and it does this, in fact, if you buy one of these things, you should immediately take it out to your car and try it. Disconnect the battery, hook it up, see if it'll run. If you have to, run the battery down, whatever. Make sure you're getting 16 and a half volts or thereabouts when it activates. And you don't have to disconnect the battery. Your battery is only 13 volts. Might not even be 13, might be 12 and a half, could be 13 and a half, but it ain't 16 and a half. So when you connect this up and it makes all the noises and the lights, it says it's working, and you test it, if your battery voltage isn't going from 12 and a half to 13 and a half up to 16 and a half, it's not working. So let's find out what's in this thing first. I want to make sure I take the bad one apart, not the good one. I marked the bad one inside the clamp. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to get it open. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try the vise. So let's come over to, as Big Clive likes to put it, the vise of knowledge, because there are no fasteners anywhere on this. This is completely glued together because they don't want us to take it apart. But usually a little judicious squeezing will open these up like that. <laughs> Just like that there. Try again, give it a little bit more. That sounded good. There we go, now we're open. The vice of knowledge. So what I suspect is I'm gonna have a great big giant relay in here. And um, I actually expected to see some MOSFETs on the board, but there's not. There's just one great big giant relay on it. See if we can get some more information off of this. I can't really see that. Is the camera focusing? Probably not. See if I can make it focus. I think I'm just a little too close. There it is. This is a 70 amp, 14 volt relay. And um, it either, and you know, the relay sounds like it's working. It's making all the correct noises, but I'm not getting voltage out where I need it to go. So I'm gonna do some testing. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna see if I can tell you what I think I found. And you know, worse comes to worse. We just remove this from the loop and we, we, we rely on our own brain not to get us into trouble, right? All right, so let me see if I can show you what I found here. Here is that little board itself. You can see how it works. Red one goes through the, um, through the relay. The ground wire just goes straight. And then there is these solder connections on the back. So when I plug this in, see if I can do it here without knocking anything over. When I plug that in, it turns green. It believes it's connected. I should have 16 volts here at the, at the ground cable, or excuse me, at the positive cable, and I do not. So if I come down here, I got my 16 volts there, but if I come to the output of that relay, I do not have it, and I should. Without it, I'm not getting it here, and it's not working, even though the relay is making all the correct sounds. So either this is a defective relay, or something's broken somewhere along the way. So let's get it back out, and let's have a better look at that. So I don't know how good you're going to be able to see this. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus. But right here... It looks like they had intended that to be soldered together, and somehow or another that solder joint got broken. Um, I don't know, it's such a mess, it's hard to tell whether they soldered it by accident and then tried to saw through it, or whether it's supposed to be soldered and isn't. Um, I could go either way, but I know that if I have 
my 16 volts here, which I think I did, but not here, that's the problem. I'm going to check that one more time. And if that's what it turns out to be, I'm going to go ahead and solder that and see what happens. You can't tell what the pins on the relay are anymore. Um, but let's, um, let me check this again. And I know the camera isn't like in the focus. Let me, let me zoom back out. There we go. That'll help it. And let's connect it up. And let's check that voltage. Again, there's positive, there's negative. It now should be operating. It is. Let's get the voltmeter. So I'm going to hold the negative there and I'm going to touch the positive there. I have my 16 volts there, but I don't have it there. Um, it's telling me I have nine there now. What's up with that? Yeah, I think that's supposed to have been connected. I'm going to do that and see what happens. What's the worst I can do? Break it? Okay, so let's flow some good old American lead-based solder in there. What could happen, right? What could happen? Let's make sure that's properly jumped. We want a bunch in there and we want to make sure both sides of that get melted. All right, let's take it back over and let's try it and let's see if that fixed it or finished it off. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? It could not work. All right, are we focused? We're reasonably focused. I'm liking this new camera. It doesn't do what I want it to do every time. But man, it's so much better than trying to use a phone. Trying to use a phone just completely sucks. All right, let's plug it in. That wants to be this way. Okay, that's fine. We'll plug it in. We got our blinky lights. Let's hook this up. You know what? Let's check the voltages on those before I hook it up. Make sure nothing horrible happened. Okay, I have no significant voltage at the clamp. Half a volt, less than half a volt. Fluctuates between half a volt and one and a half volts. Let's check it back here. Uh, I got to go from ground to there, don't I? From ground, I'll keep doing this wrong. All right, from ground to there. Yeah, same thing, one volt, one and a half volts. Let's connect this up. It says it's happy. Let's check my voltage here. And now I got 16 volts here. So now it is functioning. So somehow or another, that solder just didn't get completed. And I'm betting when these fail, what either fails is one of these solder connections back here or the relay goes bad. And if it's clicking, you know it's probably not a bad relay, although that's not 100% guaranteed. Anyway, I'm going to check it on a car and we will make sure it works there. But I can already see I'm putting my 16 volts there, so I think we're good to go. So anyway, I hope you learned something here. I, maybe I learned something. Maybe you learned that I'm an idiot. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Bye for now.